racism. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? No. Good. Thank you. You know, I love my country and you love your country. I don't care if you agree with me or disagree. I don't care if you're Republican, Democrat or independent or something else. I don't know what else is left. But you love your country. You know that our country has some flaws. You knew it when President Bush was president. I don't care what party you were in. But you didn't want the whole system changed, did you? We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. You know, I'm haunted by that, uh, that quote from President Obama that we played just a few minutes ago where he, he talked about, you know, we, 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 we don't pay attention to the community groups and the community uh, uh, organizing groups that can cobble together the coalition that will bring us the redistribution of wealth. I think we are looking at that now. Look what's happened in the last seven months. The U.S. government has taken over and is running giant corporations. We're a trillion dollars deeper into debt. A hundred billion dollars every single, what is it, five weeks? We're talking about transforming the best healthcare system in the world now. It's flawed, yes, but it's still the best. You, you know that can't be done with a deficit-neutral basis. What, what are we kidding ourselves for? Conservative estimates put the cost in the trillions. They're even talking about jamming cap-and-trade down our throats and sending our energy bills skyrocketing in his own words. Under my plan uh, of a cap-and-trade system, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. Okay, Joe Wilson last week said the president's lying about the, the whole immigration thing and the health care. Well, just last week, he's raised the possibility of amnesty and citizenship for the 20 million people who are already here illegally now. If someone's here illegally, they won't be covered under this plan. That's a commitment I've made. But I also want to make this clear. Even though I do not believe we can extend coverage to those who are here illegally, I also don't simply believe we can ignore the fact that our immigration system is broken if anything, this debate underscores the necessity of passing comprehensive immigration reform and resolving the issue of 12 million undocumented people living and working in this country once and for all. So he was right. Joe Wilson was lying. No illegal immigrants will get health care. We'll just make them all legal. Problem solved. America is never going to be the same if President Obama is able to bring these things to pass. Now, you may be for them. You may be against them. Either way, you better get up off the couch because they will fundamentally transform America. And you know what? We have a lot of problems in this country and some things do need to change. Corruption, responsibility, accountability, health care. Health care is one of them. But I think the last thing it needs is to be run by the government and the unions. What are you, nuts? You think you're a number now? Wait until they have control. You think the insurance company gives you a run around when you try to call and say, hey, can I, where do you think that's going to, when the insurance company is the government, how do you think that phone call is going to work out for you? I don't think anybody believes the president when he tells them, oh, well, we've got problems. Do doctors are removing tonsils and, 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 and they don't have to do that. They're cutting off the feet of diabetes patients. If this were a movie, you'd never believe that. The president is treating us like morons, and the problem with health care is that the system treats us like morons and not like human beings. We're numbers. The government's going to make that better? The president looks at community organizing and unions as the solution. But I believe Americans understand the solution is the individual American. Obama and those in Congress don't trust your church, your faith, but Americans trust their church over the weasels in government. Our politicians treat our military with contempt. Did you hear what Brett just said? Americans trust our military over the politicians. You see, wouldn't it be nice to have somebody sit down one-on-one -on -one with the president and tell him, Mr. President, I, 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 these policies don't make sense. Could you explain them to me in a way where no double talker rhetoric? Mr. President, you have got to stop listening to the media, to celebrities, and the elites. Because I got news for you, it wasn't the farmers that got us into this mess. It's the media, the celebrities, and the elites. We have more trust in each other, the American people, than the people we've elected to represent us have in us. 
But there is one giant pink elephant in the room. And nobody yesterday really wanted to talk about it. You know what it is, right? We'll address it next. Stealing elections, how voter fraud threatens our democracy. Uh, John, I want to play real quick, just a little bit of a highlight of uh, what he said on ACORN. Play this, please. How about the funding for ACORN? You know, it's, frankly, it's not really something I've followed closely. I didn't even know that ACORN was getting uh, uh, a whole lot of federal well, money. Well, the Senate and the House have voted to cut it off. Uh, you know, what I know is is that what I saw on that video was certainly inappropriate and deserves to so be So you're not committing to, to cut off the federal funding? Yeah. George, this is not the biggest issue facing the country. It's not something I'm paying a lot of attention to. <laughs> we don't even start with that with John. He didn't know? He didn't know they were getting money? Well, it's curious because ACORN has gotten federal funding throughout its existence, and Barack Obama has a long history of working with ACORN. Uh, he was a trainer for them in their Chicago seminars. He was their lawyer. Uh, I suspect that at some point ACORN paid him. Um, I suspect some of that was probably federal funds. Okay, what about the 800, what was it, 827000 or $807,000 during the election? Do you remember that? Barack Obama's campaign spent over $800,000 with an ACORN affiliate to get out the vote, you know, reg voter registration. We sure. all know about ACORN and voter registration. Sure, sure. And the money was categorized and reported to the Federal Election Commission as being for staging and lighting, as if they were, you know, key grips or something. Does <laughs> ACORN do that? I... Well, no, no. Then they corrected themselves when they got caught by a Pittsburgh paper. So. The Obama, the Obama campaign, I think, was not particularly eager to have people know that they were hiring an ACORN affiliate for voter registration. So why do you think that the president was then playing dumb here and saying, I didn't even, I'm not even following this and I, I don't even know? It's strange because throughout his career he's been proud of ACORN. Mm -hmm. uh, he has talked about how much he learned as a community organizer from groups like ACORN. Yeah. He has addressed ACORN. He said he was pr proudly fighting with them. Yeah, let me, let, me give the, let me give the quote. I've been fighting alongside ACORN on issues you care about my entire career. Even before I was an elected official when I ran Project Voter Registration Drive in Illinois, ACORN was smack dab in the middle of it, and we appreciate your work. He knows who they are. And he addressed them as recently as 2007, that quote. Uh, during the campaign, when ACORN got into the scandal, he said, well, you know, I know ACORN's in some trouble, but we're handling our own voter registration. He knew all about ACORN. Now he knows nothing about ACORN. Makes me think there might be something else there. There's the president, um, really, maybe something else there. All I know is he is f retreating from ACORN faster than a speeding bullet. Well, who wouldn't? I mean, really, who wouldn't? Except, uh, you know, it's interesting, the tapes that he referred, he just referred to the conduct as inappropriate. I think I, almost anyone would have used a stronger word. Yeah, I, I, I mean, he didn't, he didn't express outrage. When they, when they, um, uh, when Acorn says they fired everybody there in those tapes, is that true? Have they fired the people in New York? Have they uh, fired suspended them? some of them, fired others. Who was suspended? Um, you know which which tapes they were that were suspended. I mean, what, what do you learn your lesson after? No, I mean, do you have to have like what kind of seminar do you go to when you're like, no, in no, San Diego, immigrants should not be 13 year old. In San Diego, voters. they held a news conference defending the employee who was going to bring the kids across from Tijuana. They had a news conference defending him, and then they fired him three hours later. I guess the heat got too much for them. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Okay, John, thank Pleasure. you very much. John Fun from the uh, Wall Street Journal. Back in just a second.